Anybody want to have any questions on the NRP, NRP hearing or anything? Any protests, uh, comments? Does anybody want to look at what we're looking at? Okay. I'll, just state what it is. Well, I'll make a motion that we uh, authorize an extension of the 2012 neighborhood revitalization plan to. December 31st, 2018. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Did, did, was this ran through you? I have not seen <clears throat> it until now. Um, okay. I don't see any problems. Okay. You don't see any problems. Though, so. The only thing I notice is we only have one signature. But I believe as long as the chair signs it, it's that is sufficient. <laughs> And also, in light of the other resolutions under the correspondence, uh, we haven't done those, and those already have numbers. So this resolution be, would be resolution 1529. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> keep, your, keep them in order. <laughs> <laughs> The original of that needs to stay in the clerk's office, but I'd also like to have a copy of it. Okay, for my records. No. Okay. I would just state that the public hearing on that issue is concluded. Okay. The public uh, hearing on as far as the NRP um, resolution is now closed. Um, they give us so much time on these grants, you know. Um, the Kansas Revolving Assistance Fund annually gives out funding um, to emergency medical services. And they give us like no uh, notice, and it's due tomorrow. <laughs> so. Uh, we did have this in the original budget projections, um, and Rodney, I did revise that spreadsheet for you that you requested at the last meeting. So these were my projections. Yeah, we'll have another sure. one here. That's okay. And I have one for you too. For your information, uh, Carol's position is new. We had no way to fund future needs for grants. What, what we as commissioners did is we added a little bit to the courthouse general fund to cover uh, additional funding needs. Okay. So. so what this spreadsheet is are the grants that um, I had identified with the department heads that we would most likely go after in 2016 and beyond. So this is a living document that I'll update as we identify new grants. 
and then I present this I presented the original amounts to the commissioners during budget time um, I've added an adjusted amount column to this now so now as we get into the grant process sometimes those dollar matches shift mm -hmm. so in the first one was the transportation grant that we talked about the last time so you can see the shift um, in that process so this is the craft grant so it's under the EMS department it's the very bottom um, item we had projected ten thousand dollars they actually changed their match they used to match twenty percent uh, or seventy five no they used to match eighty percent and well, now they are matching seventy five percent instead of eighty percent so the local match is five percent higher is what it amounts to yeah. so um, the amount we're requesting in a match for this particular application is only $443 more than what we originally projected. So, and do you want to explain to them what, what it is that you're looking to yeah, purchase? Yeah, so um, I, I think in my budget worksheet I kind of explained it, but we were going to replace a single monitor every year for the next four years was our goal, um, starting with, with this grant cycle. A few things have changed with um, the state as far as this grant, and it's they will only give up to twenty thousand dollars per monitor. Well, these monitors are thirty-eight to forty thousand um, dollars. So that was our first hurdle this year that they had funded um, up to whatever you needed in the past. This year, when it came out in December, um, they'll only do up to twenty thousand. So that opened it up to another company, uh, Phillips. They came in and they gave uh, quotes for about $20,000 to stay within that. So we currently have Zoles as the manufacturer of our monitors, it's the same that the hospital has, and the same with our AEDs around town. Those are <coughs> expensive monitors. Zoll came, or Phillips came in and they underbid them significantly. So what we're trying to do this year, instead of getting the one, since these monitors are significantly cheaper, we're trying to go for two. They might only fund one, and we don't know, or they might only fund zero. But it gives us a total of $41,770 for two instead of one. Instead of one. And why, uh, and, and we'll take whatever they give us, but if we can have the same monitor in both of our <coughs> primary ambulances, is the best case scenario for us. These are life safety things that... Um, we really don't want to have to train our people both ways if we don't have to. That's my biggest reason for wanting to. There's a lot of services that won't even do that. They just replace them all at once and that, that gets really expensive. But if we could do two, that would be great. It does put us over um, by the $400? Yep, $442. $442.50. And I'm sure that we could take that money out of our donations account. I don't, I, I don't have any problem with, with this small change. In, <coughs> I mean, this, this sheet <coughs> will help us at budget time next year for the year 2017 because that's when the public votes on changes in the budget. Mm -hmm. So, and as far as this grant, we'll do the same thing next year. We'll try to get the ten thousand dollars approved from you guys to, to match it. We can also ask our auditors on an appropriate place to put a line item for putting grant money in. I don't like continuously robbing the courthouse in general for projects like this. Essentially, a courthouse in general is designed in case of a extremely large trial where we have all kinds of costs, and uh, we need to we need to be watching our budget every way we can in the future. We'll need a motion on that, I do believe, because the total dollar amount will be ten thousand. We, we've already approved the ten thousand, but I think we'll need a motion. All right. I make a motion that we increase the county share of this grant by four hundred and forty-three dollars. 
And can we include in that motion the approval for us to apply for this grant? Yes. Okay. Today. Today. <laughs> and I have signature pages. <laughs> Carol, is this a living document that you do on Google Drive? Um, I just have it on a spreadsheet on my computer. <coughs> okay. But I can share it with you if I need to. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, now that we have that awesome service, mm -hmm. um, it would actually be kind of a beneficial way for me to keep track of stuff, and it would be a living document sure. that only you could edit. If you're open to doing that, yeah. I mean, of course, having access to that would be great. Yeah, okay. if she keeps us out of trouble. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah. All of our stuff. So, oh, so like, if you want access to our policies and all that, that's... all those in favor signify oh. by saying no. Yeah. Oh. I will the same side. On a motion. Okay, and then I will need um, Brett's signature mm -hmm. and Reed's signature. Oh, I put your email there if you can just strike that out and sign it there. Mm -hmm. Would you page. make sure that County Clerk gets a copy of I will make sure, yes. Yeah. And then this also needs Brett and Reed, and then I will get Dr. Brown's signature. It's required in there too. Thank you very much. That should be the last grant of this year. <laughs> so, oops, sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pardon? I think I got like six and a half hours. <laughs> or did you guys approve this to get off at noon today? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I do. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Stay around for anything else? I'd like to. I'd like to discuss the man's okay. payment for next year. So, okay, I'll be back here. Okay. Roger, Willie, come on. charge of the uh, recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've got a building that uh, Century 2 is letting us use for the period of one year. And uh, <clears throat> we have a baiter in there that, that uh, Roger here helped us get. So now we're, uh, we're doing our own cardboard and our own chipboard at the, at the moment. But what we're after is we want to be doing all of our own stuff. We, we want to recycle everything so, so we don't have to drive our loads from Bird City down here every day or every week or whatever it wants to be. So uh, I'm just letting you know that in the, in the future here, I am going to be coming in and asking for some type of funding to help us out with the, with the uh, cost of all of this. Okay, we'll need an interlocal agreement between that city <coughs> and this county. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, hell, I didn't know if we're both under Shining County. Is that? Is it? That's when they split, maybe between that, that, that changed the the composition of what we're doing because right now, as I understand it, <coughs> St. Francis is kicking in money. Am I correct? No, we don't kick it. We, we are running the recycle center now. I don't know if this is really called a, a, a split. It's actually just maybe it's an extension of our, deal, of our operation here over to Burke City to make it more convenient for Burke City residents to recycle. Um, right. Hopefully go up. And you guys are already <coughs> giving us uh, right. like 21000 something like uh, that. Help I, operation I think we bumped that up this year for next year. Um, 
for all the buildings. <clears throat> I've got four so far. And I'm also <clears throat> trying to get how much it's actually going to cost. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be looking for uh, monies throughout wherever. Trying to get some, some monies to different organizations. Again, it's a legal question. If it's for Bird City, will you guys have any idea what it's going to cost to buy the property? Uh, the properties we're hoping that it's going to be around five thousand. Five thousand. That way we can look at the budgets and have a good answer for you when you do come in. And we're hoping to get the property for around five, and then our building. Uh, I don't know exactly how much yet, but it's probably going to be at least a hundred thousand. Have you checked in the state recently for the grants? I, I have not started that yet, but I like I say, right now I'm just <coughs> trying to figure out how much the building is going to cost, how much how much the whole total cost is going to be, mm -hmm. and then start asking for those monies. And if I can't get that, <coughs> then we'll cut back on the building or cut back where, wherever we need to be. But we're, right now we're trying for a real nice building that will we won't have to add to, you know, in two years or whatever, because uh, I guess everybody knows it won't be long before the recycling is going to get worse before it gets any better. We're going to have to re recycle more. And as I recall, the split as it occurred, Bird City wanted to start getting some of the profit of the recycling. Am I under misconception? And so that was the reason, one of the reasons why they wanted to split the recycling uh, out of the consolidated recycling center that we have for the county. Well, our our main thing is 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 that we spend a lot of money on transporting it down here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, and, and a lot of time and. Uh, Put a tear on our vehicles and and what have you. So we just figured it'd be easier if we just did our own. It makes right. sense. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know yeah. how much how much. Kevin Burns is, is, is your city attorney. I, I think we we need him to be <coughs> the county attorney on this. And then I have no real objections to that. But when it comes to taxing and how we're splitting the money, we need to be very careful. Well, and I know I'm playing catch up. Could you ex explain to me who each of you gentlemen actually work for and how the structure works? Or I can step out and talk to them individually. Yeah. So okay. I will Start give you guys a card. Uh, uh, okay, let me explain it. It's pretty, pretty easy. Okay. <laughs> um, 13 years ago, um, we, St. Francis, was trying to recycle, but some other communities were trying to recycle. We couldn't get rid of our materials in a time and manner, so. Uh, it was four counties originally got together to form uh, an interlocal agreement uh, to where we set up a hub in Colby. Okay. And then we asked each county to become a member of that hub. 
which Cheyenne County was one of the first members. Um, that, the way it works is that each um, satellite would do its own collection, each county, and then take it to the hub to be processed and to be marketed. And, and that, that before we had, we completed the flow, because we were, we were doing pretty good at collecting, weren't doing very good at getting rid of it. Okay. Stuff, and therefore, that's why we set this <coughs> view up. It uh, evolved into eight counties, northwest Kansas counties. Um, and uh, now we uh, have a, a semi that comes around and picks up at each location and hauls and recycles back and forth. Okay. Now, what we're uh, proposing here, or what we would like to work with, especially with the, the, the cardboard mandate at the dump, our guys up here are saying we're getting a little overwhelmed because we, we are actually the premier county recycling center in northwest Kansas. There's only other, the only other county that beats us is Thomas County, but there's considerable large population there. Um, so we asked them to see, I could, uh, through the organization over there, we can get bailers that uh, rent for a dollar a year or at least to, to the organization for a dollar a year to go out to like this. We have one up here. And uh, if you uh, sit, uh, do enough cardboard recycling, which I don't think we're going to have any problem with that, we can maintain those leases every year. With Sunoco is the name of the company that we use that much. Okay. That is our vendor. Um, with that being said, with them being able to collect over there. They had some major uh, uh, contributors to the landfill with cardboard and that was, it was just, they were trying to make it more accessible for those people to go in and, and, and recycle their cardboard in, in uh, coal or in the Burke City. So now what we've offered up through the Northwest Kansas uh, organization in, in Colby is that we will, we've got them to Baylor, and then we will come over and pick up their cardboard there too. They don't have to haul it the same. Originally, each county had a had a central location for pickup. Well, this is going to be unique. This is going to be two pickups in one county, which is fine. It's right on the way. I'm going back and forth. Um, I don't know that, that it's really a, a legal split or anything like that. Uh, and the county. Uh, being members of the Northwest Kansas Regional Recycling Organization, all the recyclables that are collected in Cheyenne County that you guys help fund, mm -hmm. all the proceeds have to go to the organization in Colby. So, and that's how we help run, and plus you pay the membership for the entire county. Thing you need to look at is our membership payment uh, in that agreement that we have, because like he just said, he's expanding that agreement to two locations from one. I don't think that that's going to be an issue on agreement because the issue was between the county and <coughs> Northwest Kansas Regional Recycling Organization. How will we? Because mm -hmm. say down in Gove, they have uh, four pickup sites. Uh, they use trailers and they move the trailer around. Um, Rollins County has two. There's one in McDonald and one in, in Atwood. Um, so there's multiple pickup sites in other counties that are in the, the, the organization. But you may see it. I don't know. Can you get me Google out just a Thank you for that. I appreciate well, you know, it. Well, yeah, well, I thought it was going to be easy, but I, I didn't <laughs> no, know. It really isn't because, in a way, both cities should be contributing something to the program now if we're going to split right. to two centers, which means we would have to iron that out for <clears> both <throat> cities' attorneys mm -hmm. as to what is equitable. Right. Because I don't. The way I see it, the county shouldn't be stuck with the whole thing. <laughs> uh, St. Francis collects a dollar fifty per month per uh, bill, or per mm -hmm. uh, 
refuse on your on your city bill. There's a dollar fifty called recycle fee that's paid by everybody that pays a city bill, and that's one way that we kind of help offset the operation of the building. Um, I believe that amounts to about twelve thousand dollars a year. Um, the uh, it cost us as near. We had to do some figures on uh, trying to help Thomas County and the city of Colby mm -hmm. started up on something over there last year. And basically, JR came up with about 60000 is what it costs us to run the recycle center with manpower, um, uh, electricity, things like that. So that being said, your 21000 going into there, the 12000 that, that we collect off the um, citizens' fees, um, it gets us there, but it isn't. It doesn't make it. Mm -hmm. The city of St. Francis has a pretty good financial investment in the running difference. Uh, also, Bird City also they collect out of the yeah. water bills. That's right. Towards towards recycling. They get. I think they wasn't it based on 300 meters or 300 bills? I think and, uh, and we asked we said <laughs> asked for a dollar and a half. We was 50 or a dollar in New York City as well. well uh, yeah, we, we, we both yeah. Yeah. the same thing. What is it? Okay. What is very good? And what do you guys are heard from generate per year in New York City? You know, I'll be honest with you. I I really couldn't tell you. Okay. I didn't. Really All right. Have that on that sheet. Right here. Um, up to uh, uh, November 23rd, they brought over 17.21 tons. Okay. okay. As far as funding, I don't know, but I can, I'll. Oh, I see. I'll bring that. I can bring that back and get with you yes. later on. It. Sorry, I by contribution. I. <laughs> well, I think this is a really good thing. I think we've got some red tape we need to look through, but I. Applaud you guys for what you're doing. Well, there's more to the story. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Are you done, Willie? Because I don't want to infringe on what he was here for. We had, I told you last time, we had some things come up just last year that uh, running our organization in Colby was going in the hole. That's why we had to come and ask for another dollar in December. Partial appropriation to cover that. Right. And I, I think I mentioned at the time that it probably would be enough. For next year. Yes. You did mention that. And for the board's sincere apologies for hitting me up with something like this after the budget was set in uh, July when we set our budget, but we had some things come up that. that Certainly, uh, turn this on our ear. I have not sent this letter out yet. I wanted you guys to discuss it because I'm going to have to send it to all the other counties. We are, like I said, we are the premier one. We truly do. Our tonnage reflects that, and I think I told you that. Uh, as of the end of September, we did 151 times that we shipped the coal. I mean, 151. And last year at that time, we shipped 118 times. Now, this didn't reflect the uh, cardboard mandate at the dump. Okay. And I will have those figures for you at our next meeting. And that was as of November 2030, so. That's what, uh, no, the end of September. Oh, three quarters. That's three quarters and four. So that on that deal, we could easily hit 200 pounds. And of that portion, like I said, Burke City's figured in there, and they did 17 times up to November, so they could easily get 20 times, I think. And that would be figured in that Cheyenne County is figured uh, in as part of the county. Basically, what that letter explains, I'll let you This This puts all of the counties that are in this organization into the same predicament. Essentially, we plan for $4 per 
proper membership fee, and now it's $10. Mm -hmm. But they didn't say what our county's bill is going to be. Can you tell me how that works? Uh, there should be a new page that's just handwritten very right away. That's what you call the VFR bucks. So our, our dues now this is for the year, twenty seven thousand two sixty. Is that how that's not a monthly charge? No. <coughs> if you want to give us five months, that would be fine. No, that's I, I think I would have to go to the other commissioners. No. <laughs> I think we planned for. Let me look at this. I know we had a lengthy discussion on that, and we bumped that account to thirty-five thousand nine thirty. So we are prepared to cover that membership. But what about the twenty-one thousand? Uh, I have a second figure here for recycling of 36000 So I'm assuming that's the other figure that you're talking about. Okay. Because uh, right now I think what you guys give us is a population deduced to Colby. And also you give the city of St. Francis $21,000 as a uh, help uh, offset the, the expense. Okay. It's, it's an odd figure. But it's so, so we have two, two line, uh, line items here. The recycling, and I'm not that familiar with the agreements. Uh -huh. No, I think the county clerk understands that more than I do. Okay, so we're we're adequately funded for next year. So there was a 60 percent markup between this 2015 and 2016, yeah. and I think the letter explains loss. Yeah, but I just. And when we start talking about they land, our interest is here, they sell them. That, that's a different course. course. Yeah, we are, but and the price uh, went down. Yeah, when yeah. our collections have went up, but the price, like the price of cardboard in the last four mm -hmm. years, is half of what it was. It's because we'll get them three times as much. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, actually, it all hinges it's on China, maybe or not. It's however much they want to take. Okay. So, I, you know, uh, I, I commend you guys if, if you had the foresight to, to make the deal because I, I know I've got some kind of commissioners sit on my board and call me and they just are not happy at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine the other counties and their commissioners. And see, every county is, is unique in the fact that their landfill is how, how long a life it is. Mm -hmm. And we are probably the worst thing of any county. And Charles Peckham, the guy that does your solid waste deal, that has the four counties. I think of the four counties where, where ours has the least amount of life left in it. Left in it. Yes. I'm aware that we have a landfill trust account Good. that we have been building over the years. And I'll give you credit for that foresight. Yeah. You're going to need we've, we've past commissioners have done a good job. We've got several ideas in the motion. We're kind of curious about the rear road tracks. But the lifespan that it was originally set up against is no longer applicable. Right, because it was yeah. only set up yeah. for 10 years, so it's hard. I think no, it was set up for 30, wasn't it? No. Dave, that landfill trust fund, what was that set up for? 30 years originally? They changed it. It's, uh, I got that report. It's, it's 52 it's now. And we don't have to use it because that should be. But I would, I would offer up this, that again, Cheyenne County's got the premier recycling collection deal of any of these other counties, except <coughs> Colby, I'll, I'll tell you about Colby here in a minute, but um, I think that probably in the future, when KDHE comes out looking, they're going to look at, at your recycle operation, and I think that the more they realize how much you've invested in your recycling operation, I think the more easier they're going to be get it, to get along with on your landfill. I, I, that's just uh, my two cents. You say we're making the tent. Yeah. Okay. Now, well, my, uh, Colby, we have, at the hub in Colby, we've always collected 
uh, Thomas counties mm -hmm. and uh, Colby's recyclables there at the same time. We're, we're processing all the other counties' recyclables, and they got overwhelmed. <coughs> they they are putting up or investing over two hundred twenty thousand dollars in a recycling center just for Colby. It's going to be located on our land right there behind our recycle uh, e-waste center. And they're also giving us sixty-six thousand dollars to man it, pay for two men to run it. And they are really, they want to do something with this business. Okay. I think it's the thing that everybody realizes has to be done. Did yeah. you ever come to Carol Sloper? I, I've talked with her a couple times, and right now uh, I'll be meeting with her later on, and, and we'll go after I find out how much we're going to need, then I'll ask her to help us. Okay. Right now, she did that to her son out there for me, though. Well, she says she's going to look. Most, <laughs> most of the centers ten, like, 10 years ago, like ours being one, there were grants written by KDHE, and uh, you know that's how we built our center and several other counties. There's no longer any grants from KDHE for building new centers. Uh, I guess probably, but, and uh, if you want it straight from the horse's mouth, Charles Peck. Got to write your solid waste deal. Sets on that board, like KDHE's board, KDHE's board for uh, putting out uh, uh, grants. You can get some, I think, for. Uh, Incoming call time is zero six four three eight zero seven three zero I'm sorry. I, the only thing I was going to say, do you guys suggest you've seen this letter out or not to the other counties? They're, they're going to squeal, but we did anticipate, so I'm happy we did that. <laughs> I don't think you have to send it out to... I'm going to send them out to all of them. You guys got the, the copy that's going to be sent out. You're getting one you ain't going to get much flack from us on that. <laughs> I'd but say. I, I appreciate that, and like I said, I think that's the reason that we have, we lead in tonnage, and we, we do a good job, and we have so much participation, is because of county communities. All right. We need to make have a similar letter. Okay. Yep. I'm fine with that. Yeah, you guys. just wait when it comes officially. Okay. This here is unofficial. Here, you got the first copy. Okay. I still can hear you. No, the secretary But I just wanted to visit with you. I kind of just come on a yearly um, visit. Uh, I'm always well, uh, more than happy to come if you need me any other time because technically you are my health officers. 
Um, I feel like if I need you, I know where to find you. So um, no news is good news then, because we don't have any major outbreaks or anything that we have to do. Dr. Brown has taken over as my medical director. So I do converse with her on um, subject matters, issues, certain patients that need something that we need to do. So um, I kind of use her for that so that it takes the pressure off of you guys, because I don't know that that is something you really want to have to tackle if you have to. So. Anyway, you can see on the front page there, our, our County Health Commission is that we try to help improve um, all persons in the county um, uh, by providing health services, environmental services, um, educational services that we can do um, to maintain and promote healthy lifestyles. We want everybody to be healthy. You know, we've got some outbreaks of measles in other counties. We've got outbreaks of the whooping cough disease in other counties. Um, knock on wood, we keep them out of here. So um, we're not perfect, but if we can keep people healthy, then uh, we can continue on on our daily basis without being um, sick as much. I have a little financial report there, and I run July 1st through June 30th, so I just kind of started with 2015, July 1st, and running so you can kind of see. Um, I run through some KDHG uh, grants, and they're little small ones, but they do add up and help every little bit. So I buy all the equipment with grants, um, vaccines, any supplies that I need. So that is actually where the budget, a little bit of salary comes out of these grants as well. And then you guys as county commissioners get 10600 So that's included in that as well. So you can kind of see what um, I cut kind of in off of for appropriation-wise and for grants. And I think that all of those are definitely appreciated. And they are used as you see for office equipment, vaccines, supplies, all that. At the, and, and I just gave you a little breakdown in a graph if you wanted to see it, how it was worked down. Um, staff and hours of operation, um, I am the full-time employee there. I am the only nurse in county health, and I have a part-time employer, uh, Marla Ross, has been with me just a little over a year now. She is the office assistant slash insurance biller. She's wonderful, love her. She does an excellent job, very professional in her work. Um, our office hours were 8 a.m. to about 4.30. We stay later if we need to. We're a little more flexible. I'm, over, I'm there 99% of the time over the noon hour. I can answer phones, and I, uh, people that work can come in over there noon hour to get a shot if they need to or any other services that we have. So actually, it's pretty beneficial for me to be, to be there. So that's not, that's not hard. Um, on the back side, it just shows some of the programmings that we do. It's not everything, but it's just kind of what we do in a nutshell. Uh, administrative of functions, I mean, that's that takes a lot right there on trainings and material management and conferences and ordering and keeping up on policies and procedures and doing a little bit of grant writing that we do and the collaborative work with other community partners. So that all just kind of ties into the administrative part of the job. We do disease surveillance. Uh, we do if we have some salmonella, E. coli out there, uh, uh, whatever the disease might be, um, if we do have a chicken pox that we need to look at, uh, those are all reportable to KDHE in Topeka, and we work with the epidemiologist on that and try to get those solved before anything like an outbreak. Some of you might remember the listeria about oh, what, four or five years ago on that. Um, you know, that, that is what we deal with, um, and you never know when something's going to happen. My big passion is probably the immunization program, and we are at 92% immunization rate for kids um, between the ages of 2 months to 18 years of age um, of getting their series that they need for whether it's school or just everyday living. It's the four tetanus, three polio, one MMR, which is measles, mumps, rubella, three hip shots, three hep B shots, one varicella, which is chicken pox, and the four Prevnar series. So um, I, I take pride in that one, and we are always trying to do better, and um, <coughs> we want everybody immunized that we can get in, and I know I'm loved by little ones when they come in and have a <laughs> shot, but um, you know, we are up on that, and I, I'm excited about that, and I think we can even see a bigger increase, and we are working on ways on getting more people in to be vaccinated and educating them on why to be vaccinated. The primary care clinic is a case management deal. We link people with health services for those in the community that are maybe underserved, uninsured, that type of things. 
uh, working with them. Uh, the early detection works as a cervical breast cancer um, program <coughs> and cervical <coughs> cancer for women between the ages of 40 and 64, especially those with no insurance. We try to tie them in, making sure that they get the proper treatments, um, screenings that they need, and those are paid for through grants also. Mm -hmm. School consulting, another one I really love to do. I don't get to do it as much as I want to. Um, in both school districts, as you know, we do not have a, a school nurse. So we do all the health screenings through County Health, which is vision, hearing. Um, we do the body mass index on that part. We do. We have the dental program come in, and um, uh, we do heights and weights also. So. It, it's it's great to do. We have to have those done in the fall, and then we are called in if we need to do lice checks, bed bed checks, if we need to do anything with an IEP program, um, just anything in general. We're called in to uh, we go and try to help out as much as we can. I'm not there on a weekly basis. Sometimes I, uh, it, it's maybe if I'm there once a month anymore. I'm trying to get there, but I do like to do that. It's just that I just it's just tough with one nurse um, and trying to do that. Maternal Child Health and WIC program, we do the maternal child health working with uh, women, infants, and children. We also coordinate with the Sherman County Health Department, actually does a six-county WIC program, and they actually receive the grant funding from KDAG on that, and they come up every other month and service 20-some um, families right now. So we look down on that, so we're helping to try to get that up. But, but other health services that we do with any of the children, we can. Farm Workers Program is a program um, for those, started out mainly in the dairy, but it's worked into the feedlot program too, on if they're not carrying insurance, that we can uh, work with the families in a state, it's another state program, that we can work with families and making sure that they get um, seen by a provider if they need to have, and those are paid for, if uh, we need to do immunizations, if they do um, natal services, anything like that, we work with them on that. And then, of course, the emergency preparedness. Uh, you hear several of that from Ryan and Ryan Murray and Carol and Ed Reed also. We all kind of collaborate together, which has been, has been great. Uh, I think that's the way to do it is there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. If you've got a system kind of in place where we can all come together, work on the drills. You've heard about our um, functional drill that we had back in November where we did on-scene and programs. Of, that went well. Of course, we're still working on the paperwork for after that. We have to do all the reports for KDHE. We have to have emergency preparedness plans in place so they are checked. We turn those in every year. Um, we're reviewed for them. And we just did an Ebola one um, a couple weeks ago. So never a dull moment in County Health. You never know what's going to walk through the door. Uh, you can have a to-do list, but that doesn't mean you're going to get that done in that day's time. Something else more urgent comes up. So. Uh, again, love the job. It's a, a variety of activities to do. Uh, collaborating is always a key factor in every job I think, and, and County Health is no exception with that. So, if you've got any questions or comments or suggestions for me, I'm here to take that and let you guys get on. Uh, last summer, we had <coughs> heard from your department as to what your future needs would be, but we did grant you an increase in your appropriation for 2016. It's not much. It's uh, We increased it $400. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. But Thank you. If you will give us some statistical data like this and get it to us by June 1st, if you honestly need additional funding, we'll consider it. We'll make a no, no promises that you'll get it. We'll, we will take it into consideration. Okay. Yeah, so make a note to yourself on that, okay. and we'll look at it when we look at everybody else. So I need to come in separate from when the hospital comes in? Absolutely. Yeah. You're the county health nurse. Yes. Okay. 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 She's being paid from the hospital. Yeah. But we're supplementing that. Yeah. And I don't know, is it... Brent, do you know, is there a local agreement on that between us, the county, and the hospital, Great Plains? Well, I don't I, I don't know how that's structured. I thought there was. I mean, I'd hate for them to come along one year and say, we ain't doing it no more, and dump it on our back, and we don't know about it. I'm not saying they'd ever do that, but I, I'm... 
I'm always leery of the unexpected. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that don't know, our county health department is a little different than most county health departments in the state of Kansas. There's three at three counties. Us, and I believe it's in Ulysses, and um, is it Ness? I'm not sure. Anyway, we are ran actually through our hospital where we collaborate. And actually about three years ago, Les Lacey, when he was just leaving the hospital as administrator, he and I went to Topeka and sat on a um, panel for um, KDHE to listen on the collaborating with county health working into your hospital and they're actually pushing for that in other counties and I'm, I've actually had several other counties inquire to us about how we how we do that and um, so I I answer to the hospital board once a year also, but I, I do a report, so I believe you guys get that report also. They send it electronically, I think, to you, but the county health um, numbers are in there for the entire year. So I actually report to the hospital on a board on a monthly basis, even though I don't have to attend the meeting, my reports all go in. Um, but yeah, we are just through our, our county hospital and how long has that relationship been on? You know, I'm on my eighth year in county health, and it's been ever since. Susan Rolfs, I think, was the first one that came in on that. So I, we're well over 10 years on it, 12. I don't know that we're at 15 yet, we're, but we're somewhere in between there on, on doing it that way. And it's actually worked pretty good. And we we're trying to get more in the state to do that just because of how the funds are. When I opened up in 01, they were working at work over there. So yeah, <coughs> yeah. Do you want to see if there's anything in the clerk's office on that? Any agreements between the county and the hospital? Or I've never seen any. Okay. You know, and I don't know whether Sean and Mike have something at the hospital. Sean, I can see. Okay. I can see if we could something uh, in the four minutes or so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Well, your first appropriation will come to you ninety percent. I think at the end of January. In January, 90% is given. Yeah, mm -hmm. so don't get concerned if you see a little increase over. Oh, because well, you were straight okay. lining for many years. <laughs> you were straight lining. <laughs> okay, so we, right. did, we did do that. That's all right, thank you. All right. Okay, well, you guys know where to find me if you have any questions. Thank you, Mother. Yes, thank you. Just a yeah. quick comment for Myla. She does come here. 12 times a year and does a little health thing for oh, us. Yeah. She comes right here. And, uh, <laughs> this room. I just want to say thank you. We, yeah. I kind of speak for everybody there, but uh, we all appreciate that. Yeah, so, uh, you bet. I enjoy it. Not probably more than That is a another, couple that do I guess that's the own, thing so. is I, I'm more of a nurse on wheels because a lot of times I'm out of the office as much as I'm in, but I'm doing a program somewhere. So. All right, thanks. Thank you, Bob. We're going to take a quick right. two minute break. We'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.